right, guys. Well, as you can see, um, we had about four or five inches of wet snow last night. We had had thunderstorms. We had um, mid 70s all week. And uh, yesterday was mid 50s to upper 50s. And then later on in the afternoon, it dropped down to 28, 29 degrees. And then we had thunderstorms with sleet thunderstorms. And then we had about five inches of wet snow. There's still snow on the tunnel. The other tunnel up above has already been completed. The goal here is to show you guys what I do to get the snow load off of my tunnel. And by no means is this a snow load like you do in the northeast part of the United States where they're literally getting feet of snow every time it snows. So there may be a different technique there. There's a couple techniques you can do with this high tunnel. I've seen people throw ropes over the top of the high tunnel and then more like uh, saw it, like you're scissoring it and move your way down the tunnel to loosen up that snow as it falls. But ultimately that entails at least two people. Um, and I'm by myself here during the day. So I've got to come up with a way so I can do this by myself. And I've thought about doing a broom. A broom is too short, you can't reach it. So what I came up with is, it's not ingenious, but uh, you know, it does work. It's just three quarter PVC pipe that's probably about eight foot long. And I've got a, a uh, elbow, or a, I guess you wanna call it a T there. Then I've got a section of two foot of PVC pipe and you saw me, um, nothing fancy. Most everybody has PVC pipe in their house, extra. I always keep extra in case I have a pipe burst and I can fix it. But you just saw me, all I did was gently. Now, when I say gently, I mean gently with a little bit of vigor. Um, you want to push firmly on that plastic and distribute the load of you pushing on that plastic because if you push to a point or anything, you will puncture that plastic. Hence the reason why that has a T at the bottom because then I could just gently, I'm just gently tapping the top where the purlin is just to loosen that, just to loosen what's gonna come off. Now, by all means, there still is snow and some ice on there. I'm not gonna get all that off and you don't want to because you will you will poke a hole through that plastic if you keep pushing on it, trying to get every piece off. It's gonna be a bluebird sunny sky today because of the storm that went through. It's only gonna be in the 30s but you know what? That's warm enough um, to melt this ice off the top of this tunnel. And the rest of it will run down the side, which is actually insulating this tunnel. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions that if you have a high tunnel, um, you're going to have 70 degree weather in the middle of winter. No, you're not. It's going to be 10 to 20 degrees more than what it is outside. If you guys look, it is 40 degrees in here and it's literally 20, I think 21 or 22 outside. So what that means is, is your ground is not frozen in here. See, it's warm. As you can see, I've got salon over there. I've got some radish popping up there, if you can see it. Spinach. Got some more head lettuce there. So stuff will grow in the high tunnel in winter. Actually, this snow is actually keeping this high tunnel warmer than it would be if it was just the cold weather with the wind blowing because that snow actually packs along the bottom here and it insulates against that tunnel and it keeps that heat in here. So um, guys, I hope that's helpful. Um, just a little bit into the life of a market gardener where it's cold outside, you get a little bit of snow. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching.